Game Shout. And now, and now, it's time for the Game Shout movie reviews. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved it. That was great. Lights. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, and now, and now, it's time for the Game Shout movie reviews. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved it. That was great. Lights. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, It could have been a lot better. Camera. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey. Action. Boo. The Game Shout movie reviews. Welcome back to Game Shout Radio. You're listening to Game Shout at the Movies. I'm your host, Trick Neal. we got a, a full show for you today. We've got some uh, movie news coming up. A little bit of a tragedy happened. Uh, not a little bit. Actually, a great tragedy happened. Uh, we also have Eagle Raptor's preview of Revolver, followed up by Sexy Josh's review of Underworld Evolution. Woo-hoo! Let's get right into the news. Um, just to uh, let everybody know, Chris Penn... Um, Hate to say brother of Sean Penn, just because Sean Penn's name is more well known, but Chris Penn, you probably know him as a nice guy Eddie from Reservoir Dogs, or he also was, uh, what was his name, Officer Eddie Pulaski in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. He uh, was found dead in his apartment. Um, they, doctor, the police had no evidence of foul play, but uh, the family is hoping that the media will appreciate the family's respect of privacy during this difficult time, and we completely understand that. We definitely do mourn the loss of a fantastic actor, and it's just... It's sad to have to... It was a sad day. It was, he was a really good actor. And, I mean, he's just, he's been in a lot of great movies, and he, you know, that's why I say it's sad to say he's Sean Penn's brother, because he's, in his own right, just an amazing actor, and just seems like the nicest guy in the world, so... That, you really know, who sad. would want to be known as Sean Penn's brother? Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, <laughs> who is not necessarily the nicest guy in the whole wide world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but other news, uh, let's move things on to a little bit of a, a lighter note. William Shatner sold a kidney stone. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> let's see here, goldenpalace.com is an auction site. He, he sold it to them for, it's going out, they're going to be sending it on tour around to different places uh, <laughs> as, as it's on auction. And you got to be kidding me. Huh? kidney stone, this is going to be good. And actually, I, I hear Jimmy Kimmel's a little bit upset because Jimmy Kimmel was talking to him on a show and said, well, why don't you bring it on here and, you know, we'll have the first, you know, Kidney Stone auction on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And William Shatner actually decided to go with this other site, and Jimmy Kimmel was a little upset about that. But, you know, <laughs> but it's just, you know, William Shatner is one of them guys that, you know, he's, he's always going to be known as Captain Kirk. No problem. He's Although I think in the, la- in the recent few years, he's definitely started to make a name, you know, as himself. Uh, not only with his new album that he's come out with, but he's, he's been starring in a few more movies, you know, in recent years past. Um, that I think he's starting to definitely make a name for himself as, you know, and also not he, Captain Kirk. He, did, he does, like, some of his music nowadays not is getting me. really funny and really good, you know, too. So it's like, oh, yeah. he's definitely embracing the, the humor of who he is, but I don't know if the selling a kidney stone is for the money or because it's funny to do it. I think it's, well, I, I don't think he actually quite grasps what's funny. I think he's just running off of what people are telling him to do. Exactly, but, but you know, it's still funny to he's watch him do it. It's like Adam West, you know, William exactly. Shatner. William Shatner and Adam West need to start up a buddy buddy cop show where they just go off, you know, <laughs> <laughs> stopping oh, bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two of but my anyways, favorite heroes. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to our uh, to our our <laughs> movies of the week. Let's uh, we're going to start things off with Ego Raptors preview of a movie called Revolver. Ego. Since I was old enough to think about running away, I slept with a suitcase under my bed. And when he finally showed up for me, I ran to him with just the clothes on my back. I'll look after you, he said. And that's how this all began. Black damn, go run, get All right, I got her. You know, 
It surprises me how many people have not seen the movie Snatch. When I was way younger, I saw that movie and didn't understand it at all. Then a couple years later, I saw it again and completely understood it. Then I saw it again and understood it even more. Again, more, again, more, again, and so on and so forth. So it didn't really surprise me that rep upon Revolver's initial release in the UK and upon pre-screening done in America, the film brought forth this myriad amount of negative and eh reviews. People didn't seem to like how this movie compared to Guy Ritchie's previous attempts at gang comedies. A lot of people thought it was pointless, and most thought it wasn't driven correctly into any specific direction. But then again, did you ever see Mulholland Drive? That movie was weird as all hell, and no one got it the first time around. People are watching it for like the fifth time and still don't get it. But it has meaning, in which case I believe this is true for Revolver. Revolver stars Jason Statham, a Guy Ritchie favorite, as Jake Green, an intrepid gambler who seems to have it all when it comes to gambling. Except for one thing casinos to gamble at. Jake Green is so good, casinos won't even let him gamble there anymore. In a turn of events, Jake is invited, along with his two brothers, to sit in on a private game with crime boss and local casino owner Dorothy Macha, played by Ray Liotta, who isn't exactly the greatest player. But, because of Macha's power, no one ever dared to win against him. Except, of course, our protagonist, Jake Green. Not only does Jake beat Macha, but he rubs it in his face at every opportunity. When Jake finally leaves, Macha puts in the hit on him. But ironically, Jake finds work with Avi and, J and Zach, two brothers who have a score to settle with Macha. Those who know Guy Ritchie films know that a simple setup is all the film needs to have character-based mayhem and an engrossing plot that keeps you glued till the credits roll. But what makes this film different from Ritchie's previous films? Surely it has guns, and surely it has well-defined characters that all become involved with each other somehow through an extremely complex web of events and circumstances. But what else does the film have that others don't? Well, essentially, it has depth. While the market for symbolic and profound movie making has come to be more and more prominent in Hollywood thanks to runaway hits like Fight Club and The Matrix, Revolver seems to follow the same trend. Obviously, any movie that opens up with three quotes and promotes itself with nothing but quotes about games and life and all that jazz has to have some deeper meaning to it, and it appears Revolver does. Guy Ritchie's previous movies were complex and hilarious, yes, but there was no real internal dialogue or deeper meaning in any of his films. They were all essentially face value films, and while awesome, they don't really make you leave the theater feeling wiser about yourself or your thoughts on mankind. But, with Revolver, there have already been several, several different interpretations of the meaning behind the film, and huge debates have sprung up on internet forums everywhere. Some have said they thought the movie was shallow and meaningless, while others have said the movie has a shrewd complexity that marks it high up on the genius level of movie making. Whatever the case, there's no doubt that Revolver will make you leave the theater thinking about something. Whether it's how much you were disappointed by it, or how intrigued you were by the subtle undertones, the black and white controversy that surrounds the film is enough to make it merit at least a matinee. Well, whatever the case, I'm definitely looking forward to Revolver, because I know for me, it'll at least be entertaining. You looking forward to it, Trick? Yeah, actually, it, it does sound really good. I mean, I just re-rented Snatch the other day and watched that, and I just, I loved Guy Ritchie's directing style. He's got, like, a real rock star attitude to how he presents a film to you, so I'm really anxious to see. I mean, based on the, the trailer for Revolver, it just seems like it's a little bit more laid-back and relaxed style to it, but I can't wait to see how he, you know, jumps into it with that. It definitely sounds like a great movie, and I'm definitely, I'm, you're actually, aren't you uh, reviewing that next week, too, so maybe we should just go see it together and, you know, see how it, how it comes out. But yeah, at any rate, definitely. we're going to take a quick break and come back with Sexy Josh's review of Underworld Evolution. Stay tuned to Game Shout Radio. We've got more coming up after this. And now, it's time to win some free prizes on Game Shout. Welcome to the trivia show, Game Shout. Back to Game 
Game Shout Radio. This is con- this is what Game Shout at the movies, and I'm stumbling over which show we're doing right now. But uh, without further ado, we're just going to throw things over to Sexy Josh to hear his review of Underworld Evolution. Some history is based on truth, some on lies. The war between vampire and lichen has raged for centuries. I was a loyal soldier in that battle, but I was betrayed, and now my own kind have turned against me. Yet I alone hold the key to saving our future. A powerful immortal has returned. Marcus, he is the one. The first true vampire. He was exiled over 300 years ago. What makes you think we're going to find him now? I was the one who exiled him. Vowing to release an unimaginable evil. There is only one way to defeat him. Find the girl. Bring her to me. One stands between their eyes. You know the devastation you caused before he was captured. And the destruction of all mankind. Soon you'll be drowning in lichens. Not lichens, or vampires. A new race. Created in the image of their maker. Me. You're no match for him. Well, we're gonna have to work on that. Underworld Evolution, the sequel to the original Underworld. Uh, we, story-wise, we, we get to see the return of, of uh, Celine, the death uh, seeker vampire, uh, and her boyfriend, uh, Michael, the vampire werewolf hybrid. He was the new one. At the end of the last movie, we saw him kick some ass and take some names, and then it was just this whole standoff where everyone's like, oh, crap. We're screwed. So bad guys run away. They're the new top dogs. Well, when the announcement of the Underworld Evolution came, we weren't sure if it was going to continue this story, if it was going to start a whole new one where they were just going to be like, yeah, by the way, Michael blew up in a car explosion or something. We didn't know what happened. But here's Celine, so she's going to go get some more vampire ass. So, but no, we actually do get a return to the story. Now that they've, uh, you know, they killed the last uh, the head vampire of the last film, they bring out a new head vampire, Marcus, the first vampire. Uh, so now Marcus is on a, a torrent ride to go and, and uh, release his uh, uber werewolf uh, brother, how ironic is that, uh, and begin to explain a little bit more about how the whole Lycan, you know, war had begun, although we thought it had begun in a different manner in the first film, I guess, you know, this is really how it did start. But it, it does explain more about the backstory and everything. The movie, again, is penned by uh, Danny McBride uh, and directed again by Len Wiseman. And you got to kind of wonder, after watching this movie, what the hell am I doing here? It, the movie does a good job of, you know, dumbing down your, your brain for a good uh, hour, uh, 108 minutes while it gives you some of the coolest fight scenes, uh, you know, some badass vampire and special effects and werewolves and lichens and blah, stuff everywhere. So, you know, it's a good film in that respect, but when it comes to the, uh, to the dialogue and the acting, you're looking at, uh, you know, you're looking at, what's her name, uh, Kate Beckinsale going, what are you doing here? That's right, <laughs> you're married or dating the director. Uh, Scott Speedman also does a good job of standing around looking pissed and, you know, turning into a uber vamp wolf thing, where he just runs around biting off werewolf's heads. Uh, aside from that, he really doesn't do much else except, you know, hit on Kate Beckinsale's character the entire movie since they are dating and, you know, lovers or whatever it is. You know, you gotta wonder what the hell the babies are gonna look like. Um, puppies with wings. Sweet. <laughs> uh, anyways, but I mean, the film overall, it does, a, it does a good job of at least fleshing out the backstory and telling us more about what we got from the original film. I wouldn't suggest it for the acting, but if you're a fan of the Underworld series, this is definitely a film you gotta go check out. I give it an 8.9 out of 10. So with that, I'm going to have to say thank you for listening in. We'll stick around. we got more Game Shot Radio coming up right after this. 
This is Game Shout Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. Visit GameShout.com for more info. Game Shout. Game Shout. 